Okay, in this video I will kind of derive the arc length formula that we've been using. So, if I have a arbitrary function, I'll make it look like this, and this is A, and this is B. Let's say that we want to find the length of this function, y equals f of x, and I just want to find the length of this arc from A to B. Well, we're going to apply what we've learned from other calculus problems, and we'll start by partitioning things. So we'll break it up into a bunch of littler partitions, and what this ends up like is we have, well, I'm going to undo that. Okay, so what we have here is um, I'm just going to pick a bunch of a couple of points that are above here. We can say that these are points on the function, and now we can connect these points. And by connecting the dots, we should have we can easily find the distance between two points. So. Um, this should be a good approximation of the length of the arc. So we're going to say, I'm going to define this to be point sub k minus 1, and this one's going to be point sub k. So the length is going to be approximately equal to our distance, the sum, k equals 1 to n, of the distance between the two points, p, k sub, p sub k minus 1 and p sub k. And <clears throat> we want to turn this into a Riemann sum because once we turn it into a Riemann sum, we know that a Riemann sum can be turned into an integral, which makes things a lot easier to compute. So, we can turn this into the distance formula. We have the length is approximately equal to the sum, k equals 1 to n, of the square root of x sub k, minus x sub k minus 1 squared, and these x sub k's are the x values to go with the p sub k's, plus f of x sub k minus f of x sub k minus 1, all squared. So basically, this is this written out with the actual distance formula. So, now we know the mean value theorem for calculus, or the mean value theorem for, you know, derivatives, that sort of thing, says f prime of x sub k superstar, and that's just a value in a the kth interval, is equal to f of x sub k minus f of x sub k minus 1, and this is k minus 1, not the actual x, val x value minus 1, all over delta x. So, if we solve it for this side of the equation, I can just delete this, and move it this over, and I'm just kind of saving on copy work here. 
um, delta x times f prime of x of k superstar. So we now can plug this into here because we know that this is a delta x. We've defined delta x to be the difference in the x values. And we need to turn this into a delta x as well, or in terms of x of k superstar or delta x to turn it into a Riemann sum. So the length is going to be approximately equal to the sum as k goes from 1 to n, square root of, this would be delta x squared, plus, now we have this, which is delta x times f prime of x sub k superstar. And again, x sub k superstar is just the notation for a point inside of the kth interval. So if this is x sub k minus 1, and this is x sub k, x sub k superstar could be anywhere in this interval here. It could be even at the endpoints. It just is a value in that kth interval. So we now have the length is approximately equal to, I'm going to have to hurry up because I'm running out of time, k equals 1 to n square root of, now when we square this, we get delta x squared plus delta x squared f prime of x, and this would be k superstar. I can't write with the that small right now, squared. So now if we factor out a delta x, we get, or a delta x squared, and because it's squared, we can actually pull it out of the radical. So sum k equals 1 to n of the square root of 1, because we pulled both delta x's out of here, plus f prime of x sub k superstar squared delta x. So when we turn, this is a Riemann sum because we have a sum, some function of x sub k superstar and a delta x at the end. Now when we send this to, when we take the limit as n approaches infinity, and I can't write that small, um, is an integral. So this is actually going to be the integral from a to b of the square root 1 plus f prime of x squared dx. And that's because the x of k superstar turns into an x when you send it to an integral, and the delta x's turn into a dx. So that is why the length of an arc formula works, because basically we took a bunch of tiny um, straight lines and summed the distance between their endpoints. So it's basically finding the sum of a lot of tiny line segments. And the more line segments you make, the more precise your sum is. And that's why we have this integral to do that.